Hello everyone. There is a story of three men discussing their obituaries with their priest. One day the priest asked them, What do you want people to say at your funeral? One said, I would like the people to say, He was a good and kind man who cared about others. Another man said, I would like them to say he was a great husband and loving father. The priest finally looked to the third man. Without hesitation, he said, Oh, I would like them to say, Look, he's moving. How do we want to be remembered by people? And how do we want to be judged by God? Friends, from our study of the letters of Paul to Timothy, we have come to know that Paul, with the certain knowledge that he would be soon dead, writes his second letter from his prison in Rome to encourage Timothy in his ministry. In today's text, Paul recalls his Christian faith of over 30 years and envisages what awaits him after death. He says, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. The key word to note here in this verse is libation. Libation means the pouring of a liquid offering as a religious ritual. In the Old Testament times, when an offering was consumed by a fire, a worshipper would pour wine over it to produce an aroma pleasing to God. At the time, wine was a symbol of joy and celebration. Such offering was a symbolic representation of the worshipper's wholehearted commitment and joyful surrender to God. By speaking of his own death like a libation, Paul reminds Timothy that he is gladly and wholeheartedly accepting his death for Jesus Christ. In other words, he tells Timothy that he is not afraid to die because he is simply going home to be with the Lord. Moreover, he is happy and satisfied with the legacy he leaves behind. He says, I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. I have competed well. Paul recollects the struggles he has undergone for the sake of his ministry. In many of his letters, he speaks at length of his physical sufferings, such as being stoned, beaten, flogged, imprisoned, shipwrecked, and starved. He speaks about his emotional suffering or mental agony, such as loneliness, abandonment, discouragement, hopelessness, and so on. He also describes his struggle against spiritual forces. He laments over his ongoing struggle with sin in the flesh. And yet, he has no regrets for following Christ. Instead, he humbly acknowledges that by God's grace he has competed well. I have finished the race. Paul is truly very pleased with his performance. In his letters he often uses the analogy of running a race to describe Christian life. He began his race on the road to Damascus with the intent to win. Since the time Jesus Christ took possession of him, he has run the race with Jesus in his mind. Jesus 
is the Lord and Saviour of his life. Now that he has come to the end of his life, he is content that he has finally reached the finish line at last. I have kept the faith. Paul takes pride in his faith. In his writings he confesses that even in the face of death he would not corrupt his faith or compromise the truth to please others. Now, close to his death, he asserts once again that he has been true to his faith in Jesus through all the conflicts and dangers to which he was exposed. Paul not only remembers his faith journey but also visualizes a reward for his unswerving faith and obedience to God. He says, From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me but to all who have longed for his appearance. He sees a crown of righteousness awaiting him in heaven. He is confident that the Lord himself will reward him. Moreover, he believes that it is not just to him, but also everyone who loves the Lord and eagerly waits for his coming will inherit the crown. Friends, what is the message for us? We have already started running our race from the day of our baptism. But we are not going to run forever. Somewhere out there is the finish line. For some of us, the finish line, which is death by biblical understanding, is perhaps 40 or 50 years away. For some, it may come sooner than we expect. We do not know when or where or how, but sooner or later it is bound to come. Whenever and in whatever form death comes, we should gladly be welcoming it. Meanwhile, let us live a meaningful life and happily participate in our faith journey. Participation is an important part of the Christian faith and life, and it must be like that of Paul's. For example, all human beings experience sickness and suffering. The only difference is less or more. Therefore, let us offer our life like a libation. Let us stop complaining and grumbling about our circumstances. Instead, let us actively and gladly live life to the fullest. Let us also stop blaming and pointing fingers at others in the church. Instead, let us actively and joyfully profess and practice our faith. Only an active, living faith can give us peace of mind confidence and hope of a bright future. Finishing our race well does not happen by accident. The Christian race is not easy. It is often hard and sometimes we wonder if we can make it. Every day is a day of struggle. We may love the Lord wholeheartedly and yet there are times we feel abandoned, discouraged and hopeless. We may struggle against the sinful desires of the flesh and try to keep it under control. We may struggle against worldly powers and spiritual darkness, but with Jesus leading us all the way, we can finally reach the finish line. Therefore, we must keep our focus on the things above, particularly on Christ himself. Let us continue to grow in Christ Jesus until we become like God in righteousness and holiness. 
Let us keep our faith in God strong to the end. Let us persevere, love and hope in Christ, so that one day we are also rewarded with a crown of righteousness like all the saints in heaven. Amen. Dear friends, Paul was a man of great faith and influence. He shared his testimony to encourage, uplift and inspire others. People who have great faith are very few in numbers. Today, Miss Lily Wong, a devout and faithful Catholic from Hong Kong, wants to share her testimony with us. I have known her for four years. She was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in May this year. Since then, Lily has put her trust in God's power and will. Our community and her friends have also joined her in her prayer of thanksgiving and praise. <laughs> 